This is gonna come off odd. The glazed donut. All right, well, let's get casting. I'm here with Jesse Westover. Jesse Westover and I have had a relationship for a long time. long time, almost 15 years. I want to tell them the way we met because it's one of my favorite stories. We're both a little bit different in, in how we go about things. Um, Jesse owns the Westover. Westover Law Firm. Yeah, Law firm, right? happened to be across the street. That's the nice convenience. Mothership of both of us <laughs> right across the street from each other. I'm walking and I'm a much younger attorney way back when. And as were you. I thought you were just going to say you're much younger than me. Is what you were I don't say. actually think I am. I don't think so. That's I don't, I, I'm wondering where you're going. Yeah, no, I'm not younger <laughs> than you. you. You can still coach basketball and get up. I mean, you got, that, that's pretty awesome. Uh, me, I'm pulling something. I'm going to probably break something. Coaching, not playing. I know, but you still get into it some. Guarantee your money back type thing. Here, let's get this mic a little bit closer to you. Yeah, I just want to get close to that microphone. So I'm walking. I've got a little bit of a stressful gig. Um, Arizona firm does criminal defense. We do a ton of Latino work. And so half of this pod is going to be kind of fun. I'm going to spring this on Bailey right now. Half of this pod, we're going to do it in English. And the other half, we're going to do it in Spanish. Awesome. So, all right, all right. So what, we're, what we have here is... I'm walking around because I'm stressed about this particular case. And I usually walk around Reed Park, which is like literally three or four blocks away. But this time I just walk to Reed Park. And I see this car in the parking lot with the windows down just a little. And it's a nice, it was a nice time of year, if I remember right. It, was, it wasn't hot. I hope. Yeah, it was a nice time of year. Windows were down a little bit. And I see this well dressed fella in, in a car just dozed off. And I'm like, well, I'm going to have some fun with this guy. I mean, I have no idea. I don't know what came over me, but I just kind of, nah. back then, apparently we weren't scared about getting shot. Uh, yeah. I've heard weird things about that park since this. Before. Yeah. So I guess I escaped death on this particular day. So I just kind of knocked him a boom, 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 and you sprung up and we sprung up a relationship from there. I mean, we found out, Hey, you do immigration work. I'm a criminal defense guy. That's what our firm does. And I'm like, awesome. I need to correct the story a little okay, bit. Okay, go. So, yes, you woke me up. But I, I didn't don't want have people to think that, that I was like sleeping at 10 in the morning while I had Oh, no, it was like 2 office. o'clock in the afternoon, man. So, the story is, yeah. So, back in the day before I hired associates, also a young attorney trying to do the grind on my own. Right. My facilities that I would have to do stuff in would be in Eloy and Florence, a lot of the detention centers. So... Sometimes it was like a five in the morning trip over to detention center in Florence or whatever else. And so by the time I got back from a two and a half hour road trip and needed a refresher, I think we were probably still lunch break. So it was right. about 1230. It could have been. It but yeah, been I would pop lunch. in occasionally and, yeah. and not let my staff know that I was taking a power nap before I got in. So I it, a half an hour power nap. It wasn't the only time I got the window knocked on me, though. I did that like three times. You once and a cop another time saying that I probably shouldn't be in this park. You get business from the so cop, that too? Was, yeah, so <laughs> was a, I've done it like three times, and that was the last, the last three that times. Was so. That was it. It was probably Rivera. He kept pulling me over for having too dark a window tent. He gave me a friendly warning, and just and it was funny because I think he knocked thinking it was going to be something shady, too. Right. But then he saw me in a suit, and he's like, what are you doing here? Right. I'm like, literally just recharging. I would not have minutes. knocked if I wouldn't have seen the suit. Okay. okay. I would well, not have knocked. It, it just, one of these things is not like the other. And so I'm like, eh, there's something. Message the criminals. And so well. boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I, get, yeah it, <laughs> I like it. Message the criminals. Dress well. That's right. You, you probably you probably you escape alone. a few things exactly. No, that was a that was a, that was an interesting time. 12, 13 years. Ago. We swapped numbers, and ever since, my attraction is more than skin deep. So, just so everybody knows, okay, somebody caught that. <laughs> um, I love the fact that you're honest, and immigration work has a lot of. In my opinion, what I see, because I get to see these folks trying to be a, eligible for an immigration outcome, for something positive, any type of documentation that they could possibly apply for and, 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 and get. Um, I get the panic side of things. I might have just screwed up my entire life because I got a DUI or 
um, I, a criminal charge of we we boy together we've seen a real yeah, you get the consequence part like yeah. the guy that refers to me after somebody's in trouble and right they, I'm, or, I'm, I'm or they come to, to me to clean it up clean first it up and then in, in go the back way. to you yeah, exactly. yeah it's kind of back and forth that said um you tell me and and they've already heard it so i never have to tell them that some folks don't qualify some folks don't have um, a possibility of getting uh, documentation uh, legally in, in this country the way the laws are written now. You tell them that. Yeah, unfortunately, that's a conversation that I don't love to have, but it's an unfortunate conversation that I have to have quite often. And it, like I said, sometimes on your end, you're sending me somebody that's already committed something that has to defend themselves now because right. you're defending them on, on something. And that that's first result things of first. that conviction right. is going to result in some kind of immigration consequence. Yeah, but you help me there. I, and there's yeah, there's analysis into where we can help each other as to eliminate consequences or perhaps mitigate consequences. And you and I work a ton together on trying to figure out what the right plea deal is. Um, sometimes it's not the best plea deal on the criminal side of things, but it is the best plea deal on the immigration side of things. Right. And, and we have to balance those things between our it's clients. Interesting how we've gone that direction and, so and many times. Fit and, and unfortunately, that's the way it is. But we yeah, we, we work together because they ultimately don't want to lose their papers. Or they don't want to be placed in immigration right. proceedings. But uh, yeah, the, the unfortunate part is, is that sometimes, depending on what crime they committed or depending on their personal circumstance, they have to come to me and I have to say, I wish you the best of luck, but I can't take your case. Right. And, and, and frankly, I think they appreciate that, especially oftentimes, um, oftentimes they've spent money um, somewhere else uh, chasing a dream that did, that did not exist. Yeah, and that's... I get that on the, all the time, whether it be, you, you know, we're defending somebody on a consequence or just they're looking for an affirmative benefit. Sure, I have that conversation all the time where people are coming in and saying, hey, this attorney told me this and I'm halfway through the process, but I'm not feeling like this is, the, I, I had this twice yesterday where somebody said, I'm about to leave to my consulate appointment in Juarez, which is a big deal when right. leaving the country. Right. And I don't feel good about what's going on. There's some things here I want you to analyze. I had to tell both of them, don't leave. Don't go because Which you're not coming because, back. Yeah, that's the problem is, is right. they're going to have a 10-year penalty. They're not going to be able to come back. And so oh. unless they're willing to go and, and wait those 10 years, I had to tell them. And they paid for that. Sure, there are thousands of dollars. That, right. Not I mean, with just five, a, 10 grand, no, and, and, and they're coming to you for, they find you. I just, okay. So I put this together, and I'm maybe not the brightest bulb, but I like truth. Yeah. And when it sits you, I mean, I nobody... Will I send for an immigration question, minor or huge? I send nobody anywhere but you. No, and I I appreciate that, and you've you've been super loyal, and I and I hope I've returned that favor as far as when we have things that we need on the criminal side. I mean, my my thing with the with the honesty or the integrity thing is is that number one, I've got to maintain a reputation as an attorney, and so in order to get clients. I need to be honest with people because the more you yeah. are, do what these other attorneys do and the, you feed them down the road, the more they're the less they're going to refer their own families, the less they're going to give a good review and whatever else. So there's there's personal gain in that, but but mostly that is just because I think it's fair to people. Like I I don't understand the the mentality of yeah, let's figure out what we can do in the future. Right. When, they, when the attorneys know already that if they ask the right questions right. from the beginning, they're going to know whether there's going to be problems at the end. Right. And so a lot of times the strategy is, oh, yeah, you need an attorney. You came to me, and so here's what I charge. And then at the end, then there may be some doubts or whatever else, and then they wash their hands of it and say, oh, sorry, yeah, you're right. Yeah, but to that send was, somebody to Juarez. Yeah, no, that's a big deal. I mean, that's... That ruins people's lives. That, 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 that's, a, that's a life changer. I mean, that's a cancer. You just got diagnosed with cancer and you're, you don't have cancer yeah. and you just went through all the treatment. You don't have cancer. That's so, so what yeah. this is looking like. So yesterday, for example, I had a, a, a young, young man, probably he was 20 years old. He was being petitioned by his green card father. Petition had been in the system for five or six years. So he'd already spent thousands of dollars in both immigration fees and attorney fees he was at the point of leaving. His attorney advised him to go, um, but the attorney didn't realize, or I don't know if it's ignorance or just not good skill or whatever it is, that the, that kid had turned 18. There's different laws that apply right. once you turn 18. And so yeah. the minute he turned 18 and stayed in the country, he had a penalty, and it was going to be a 10-year penalty. And he was about to leave. 
on his yeah, own. On his own. Right. Eight year old kid leaving his family here. He was the he's the only one. In fact, all four of his siblings have citizenship. They were right. born, they were here. born here. For whatever reason, he was taken out and, and mom was out of the country when she had him. So he's the only one in the family. He would have been sent out. He wouldn't have come back. So look, we're going to fix it. And I told him, look, you'll need to be patient. They had no trust in the attorney now. And so they're going to fire him. And right. unfortunately, I've got another five years of a process that I need to right. do for him because he needs a waiver now. And but it's worth it. For, they walked away feeling great yeah. in what I told With them. Hope. Not, not feeling great right. about the fact that they don't they get They got benefit. duped. Um, they just went through all this crap. And then, all right, we got to restart. But at least there's... I feel like I can trust this. And that's what dad kept saying. Because dad ultimately was the one that I think was paying the bills here. And he's like, look, I don't, I gave him prices and whatever else. And I'm like, look, I'll try to help you as much as I can. Because I know you've spent money on somebody else. But here's what I can do. There's still a lot of work. And, and dad was just like, I, I don't even care. Can this be done? Right. And can it be done the right way? And I said, right. yeah, absolutely. It's just going to be a, an exercise of patience. And we need to do it the right way. So, and that should have been recognized from the mini. And what yeah. I want to drill down on is... Okay, so you feel like it's the right thing to do. So do I. And I feel like the clients, like that father yesterday, they can take hard stuff. They can take, you don't qualify. You have three-year-old children, five-year-old, seven-year-old, whatever. When they're 21, yeah. come and see me. I mean, the Conversation's uh, been had many uh, times. Uh -huh. 15 years. Right. Yeah. Right. It's so amazing. And you tell me that and like, all right, or, Hey, I'm going to need him to spit. I'm going to need him to swallow this criminal offense because this is acceptable in my world. Yeah. And I'm over here going, uh, that's way worse than we're charged with man. And you're like, trust me. And, and, and I, and I do. And I advise them going, Hey, you're going to end up having to take something that you wouldn't yeah. want to. And it's not Dana's fault. You're going to right. And, and now it's, now I manage the attorneys and now I'm, I'm in management. And so I take these cases uber serious because I have the relationship with you and, and we need to know what's the moving parts because immigration changes sure. quite regularly. Unfortunately, Very frustrating. Yeah. I love it though. I, know, I knew you were going to say you that. Have to, <laughs> I mean, because I'm, I'm ADD by nature, not diagnosed, but in the sense that, um, you know, I think I'd be bored if I was dealing with the same statutes every day. No offense. I mean, I'm criminal statutes. That's, and you still got a lot to do, but I just would be bored personally. I know that sounded like a shot. That's not, I, I use estate planning attorneys all the time. <laughs> times, that's my example. It's awesome. um, but I, I'd be bored in the sense that I like that I've had a different job literally every four years and maybe even less because it's so driven by federal policy. Yep. And every time there's a new president, every time there's a new Sheriff Joe here, every time there's something going on politically, it completely changes the nature yeah. of my job. So while everything's been the same since basically 1997, every federal memo that comes out changes the nature of how they analyze cases. I love it. And what I've Not loved, everybody loves it, but I, I What I've loved is that information that you're like Johnny on is like the difference because it could change. Remember back in the day, I mean, we're going, we're rewinding. We go back longer than 13 years actually because I'm sitting here remembering the days where you're saying, um, dude, you need to... Uh, uh, I think it's like 08. I don't know what It could have been. Yeah, what the, whatever the math is. It has a long time because you're like, okay, um, tampering with a federal document will work. I'm like, tampering with a federal document? Oh, that does exist. I don't know, Westover is a brilliant genius. I mean, literally, that is the, in the statute, tampering with a federal document. And I'm like, all right, and we and got it. that was it. the best thing about you, and that, that's a compliment to you. You've given me tons of compliments. But I, I'll, there, there'll be criminal attorneys that'll call me because they've been given my name or whatever else, not that we're referring clients back and forth, but they'll call no me worries. and say, hey, um, you know, hey, I got your name. You represent this guy. Here's the statute that I'm looking at. And... I may say, hey, can you try this? And their almost immediate answer is, I don't think so. But when I when I pop those questions to you, it's usually, I think we can get something done, or I'll, I'll yeah. grease some wheels, or yeah. whatever. So the, the aggressiveness is, is fun on my yeah. end to be able to. And every once in a while, I have a, every once in a while, thank you. I, we, we appreciate that, because the, the attorneys we got rolling right here are really hungry and really cool about, they're intrigued by this whole thing that, that we've been doing for a long period of time. Um, they're intrigued by it. And so am I. It's like one of my favorite things to do because then I know I don't get the good story at the end and I'm not playing victim and wah. Yeah. 
I, I played my part, but then you get to provide somebody. That's true. I get to get the benefit at the end. Right? You get to provide someone with something of tangible, life changing moment, and, and it's like that is that is so cool. Actually, I, I feel I good the enough. To get the unsung hero part, the assist, uh, the hockey assist. I look. I like being the Steve Nash of the world. <laughs> you know, I, he got MVPs. Yeah. Absolutely. He was pretty good. Absolutely. I wish he would have got a ring. I know. That would have been Same cool. This year, maybe. Right? Well, not for him. But yeah, no, not for him. But in general, it looks like, well, anyway, let's not jinx it. Um, so let's tell a story real fast, and then let's, let's uh, basically we're going to be back because I want questions. There's going to be a lot of questions, and we're speaking in English right now. And so we want the questions to come in English and or Spanish, so we'll finish up this pod in Spanish in a minute. Um, yeah, we speak Spanish. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's amazing. It's a special secret. Anyway, we learned it in law school, right? Uh, sure. Sure, right. Anyway, a um, couple months ago, it was not very long ago, and you called me very concerned. Um, Paige thought you were ticked off. I you don't have that funny. gear. I, I literally don't have that. that you don't really have that gear. But You're I a napper. Paige, that you saw some sort of emotion from me. My wife would say there's none. But that's awesome. Okay. But because you were on speaker for a minute, and you right. asked about a client, I did not remember their. I mean, it's been a long time. It'd been three or four yeah, years. Yeah, an old client. Of yours, um, and I mean, I I dropped everything, blitzed into here, uncovered because it's before our our current system that we have now. So the the physical file was right. it was offsite, and so I don't find my way offsite very often because that place is daunting. Mm -hmm. That storage unit, I, oh, mine's boy. on site, but it still fills offsite. Yeah, and I don't want to go in there. Either, so. <laughs> Might be a good napping spot. Well, maybe, yeah. Nobody wants. No to one go wants there. to go in there, right? That's... Okay. Anyway, so I go and I and I get this because it what you were telling me just didn't seem like that would have been our result. And thank goodness I was able to get the, get the file. And, and before I could even get it over to you, you'd already called and said, hey, okay. it's okay. I, I could see on the docket here, 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 and here, and there. It's okay. And I was like, all right. The cool part of this story is you gave a crap. You're like, what in the Sam happened here? This is really going to jam us up over here. And this, this individual, this one person is really going to hose this one person. I jumped as though that one person was my, still my person too. That's the way we're both wired. I, I love that. And so when I see your ending and I see their other family members coming through here too, and I know they're associated with you. I mean, we got Cottonwood folks. We got... We got folks from the White Mountains. We got you're quite famous in, in Cottonwood. I don't know what it is with that area, but yeah, yeah, they like you in Cottonwood, man. Got a niche there. I don't know. Cottonwood's awesome, though. Yeah, it's a cool place. Yeah, it's great. I love Cottonwood, and your clients from there are. I need to put a billboard up there. So. They could have been my best client. They're 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 all, all your clients are great. Anyway, the fact that this person was in good hands, and the fact that they were long ago in good hands, and we just took a minute to figure. Um, there was no acrimony between us, but man, that was awesome to know. And, and you're telling me the story for the first time this morning before we even recorded the podcast, and I didn't even remember the client. So yeah. number one, I apologize if I sounded angry. But <laughs> it's all good. I, I number love two, it. I love to hear the story that 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 mattered to you that you went through around. I mean, literally, it was just somebody that came in off the off the streets and was ready to do their next process. They didn't have an appointment with me that morning, and and they are a client of ours, and they had ask some questions and I'm analyzing their criminal docs before they went to their appointment. I think maybe one of my other associates brought it to me and said, Hey, is this, yeah. I looked at it and went, Oh no, this is not what we want on this statue. Right. And then I saw your name on it. And usually that's not the case is we get what we want usually on these plea deals. Right. And so, yeah, I, and what ended up happening was is that we just had old documents and you had done something to dismiss the case. And, yeah, we, it we I, looked like the plea deal looked like he took a guilty plea. I know. Ended up being I know you don't get. Early. I know you don't get angry, <laughs> but I do. Well, and and then, you can ask my wife about that one. I do because I hung up the phone. I'm like, Ann, uh, what? Blah blah blah. And blah, you blah. told me. You told me I'm going to find out what yeah. happened here. And so. And so we did. I started just shaking every tree we could. But anyway, that kind of stuff matters to us. Um, immigration law is. 
pure awesome. And truth and the way you roll, I love it. So I want to pod with you and let's let's get a channel going. And let's tell that story in, in, in Espanol. El otro día, él me llamó um, pidiendo qué le pasó con este, con este caso. Uh, me parece que me parece que ese es un cargo que nosotros no podemos sobrevivir en inmigración. Y no me recordé el caso. Había como tres, cuatro años atrás. Uh, así que, pero yo no recibo llamadas con usted sobre eso mucho. Um, de esta manera. Uh -huh. Entonces, yo tenía que buscar el archivo buscar lo que pasó con este, uh, porque la vida de esta persona está en, en sus manos. Y yo quería hacer mi parte, pero hey, la, la parte de la, de la firma aquí, pero yo quería más que nada ayudarle a, a su cliente, que era mi cliente. Uh -huh. oh. Así que, a, a su parte, ¿qué pasó? Yeah, básicamente un día estuvimos ahí preparando un cliente para una cita en inmigración. Um, no me acuerdo si fue una cita aquí dentro de los Estados Unidos o fuera, pero algo importante. Entonces siempre revisamos los casos antes de ir a, a una cita para ver si hay algo de cambio, hay algo nuevo en el caso. Vimos un documento criminal que siempre nos llama la atención cuando hay algo criminal porque puede afectar, afectar algo migratorio, um, el beneficio más que nada. Entonces vimos el papel o uno de los abogados en mi oficina vio el, el papel y siempre cuando hay una, algo que les llama la atención me lo traen para que yo pueda como el jefe de la oficina revisarlo y, y ver que todo está bien y, y miré el caso y estaba revisando los papeles y había un cargo criminal que para mí en el papel dijo que él dijo culpable un cargo que le iba a afectar muchísimo, que iba a descalificar por el beneficio. Entonces eso obviamente me asustó mucho y lo bueno es que vi su nombre ahí en el papel que era el abogado del caso. Obviamente habíamos compartido la información de este cliente, si vino de usted o de, de mi parte, no sé. Pero entonces le llamé diciendo, hey, usualmente estamos muy bien con estos casos, entonces ¿qué pasó aquí? Porque este cargo nos va a afectar mucho. Eh, y usted me dijo nada más que, um, que quería averiguar que no le sonaba que algo... Um, regular que, que pasa, entonces me dijo que iba a averiguar. En el transcurso de estudiar el caso, yo pude encontrar otros papeles que él tenía en su sobre que básicamente resolvo, resolvió el problema, que él realmente no tenía el cargo. Tenía el cargo, que, pero le habían quitado el cargo por algo que sí. usted hizo. Pero ya, yeah, no, para mí era importante saber que por el caso suyo o por la parte suya, aunque eso pasó hace cuatro o cinco años, le importó mucho de que eso tal vez iba a afectar al cliente. Entonces, yo sé que me dijo que estaba aquí you know, gritando con los abogados, tratando de encontrar la respuesta. Um, you know, y, y todo salió bien, pero ya yeah, estoy de acuerdo que eso nos indica que los dos estamos en la misma página y queremos lo que es lo mejor para el cliente. Es exactamente es, es... La más importante cosa es el cliente y haciendo o trabajando para este cliente y también teniendo usted en nuestro lugar para, porque usted sabe exactamente lo que está pasando con inmigración. Usted sabe lo que va a afectar a uno y lo que es aceptable con las leyes de inmigración. Y nosotros estamos enfocados en leyes criminales del Estado y no son cosas de federales o, o, o inmigra, inmigratorio, digamos. Pero, pero lo bueno es que ustedes siempre, uno de los bufetes mejores de reconocer cuando hay un latino o alguien que tiene tal vez problemas migratorios, que siempre recibo una llamada de parte de ustedes. Si era un cliente mío o solo es un cliente, y no solo que ustedes tienen, que siempre me llaman diciendo, hey, tenemos este cargo ¿Cómo les va a afectar? Y eso es algo que ha continuado con todo su bufet, porque yo recibo llamadas de otras personas aquí en la oficina. Uh, ah. No siempre viene de, sí. de parte suya. Es divertido. Es divertido. de en, eh, A mí me gustan cam, los cambios, como usted estaba diciendo en inglés. Uh, usted le gustan los cambios porque sí. es un más interesante para, para usted. Um, para mí es interesante porque es interesante para usted. O es sea, divertido para mí ver 
uh, él es anim, animado por este nuevo, oh, 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 ahora no. No podemos usar... Da, da, da. Yeah, no podemos hacer... Ha cambiado. Da, 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 da. I mean, con right. sugerencias que le di hace 10 you know, años ahora, you know, yo siempre trato de llamarle y decir, ok, hey, el asalto que recibimos hace 8 años que no, no nos afectó, ahora sí. Entonces, para que sepas, no, no, no puedes... El, el endangerment de hace unos uh -huh. años, que era un, una oferta buena para el DUI, uh, uh -huh. pero de ahí la Corte Suprema decidió algo diferente, hablando de lo, las consecuencias migratorias, y sí. tenía que avisarles a ustedes, hey, ya no podemos. Ya no eso. podemos, no podemos. Necesitamos un, algo un, más ya, fuerte. Ahora tenemos que hacer más. Más fuerte. Yeah. Lamentablemente. Yeah. Um, me encanta representar a la gente. Eh, eh, los que no tienen documentos, es, eh, la vida está en las manos de usted uh, no. y están en, en las manos de la firma aquí por un rato, pero está en las manos de usted por un gran tiempo, usualmente. Yeah, y we, esa es la meta mía. Para poder yeah, hacer algo donde hay consecuencias mínimas en lo que ustedes hacen al lado suyo para que no... You know, la, para que la persona pueda recibir su beneficio en el futuro. Y lo bueno, de, y lo, lo bueno y lo malo de, de inmigración y criminal es que mez, mezclan mucho. Um, you know, a veces personas no tienen una consecuencia migratoria o, o criminal um, y pueden hacer su proceso porque no han tenido contacto claro. con la ley. Pero desafortunadamente yo diría que eso es algo mínimo en mi oficina. La, mm. la mayoría por lo menos tienen algo en el pasado o al, algo que les causa estar en proceso de deportación. Entonces, esas personas son importantes para los dos porque no solo tienen que preocuparse de las consecuencias criminales, pu pueden ser días en la cárcel o multas o lo que sea, pero de ahí tienen que tener el extra estrés de que van a recibir una consecuencia migratoria. Entonces, ya, yeah, están ahí. You know. sí. A mí me encanta Entonces, trabajar con usted. Westover Law Firm, Jesse Westover, Westover Law Firm, lo mejor abogado de inmigración que hay. Y nosotros somos de uh, Arizona Firm. Uh, los abogados aquí, criminales, son los mejores que hay también. Y nosotros trabajamos juntos, pero no revueltos. Yeah, we just got to bring it here. How's it, how's it looking over there in the machine? It's catching. All right. So you were, so you were telling me about this, uh, about this story about a fellow that went through 10 at, uh, uh, at yeah. least a handful of, of immigration attorneys. Yeah, he, he came into the office. This is a, what I thought was a U.S. citizen, what he thought was a U.S. citizen. I'll get into that. But, um, yeah, a guy that walked into my office from the Middle East that uh, had gone through a dozen attorneys or something like that trying to tell him. Um, well, he was trying to solve a problem that had just come up to him in his later years. So this is a guy that works, um, you know, for a government agency. He's in his 30s, I would say. He's a mailman. He's he is uh yeah so he he works for the postal service. That's awesome. Um, had been, was born in New York of all places, so a birth certificate from New York. So obviously most people would assume that if you were from New York and uh, born in in the United States that you're a U.S. citizen. And he had applied for his passport and was told from the Department of State that not only was he going to get denied his passport that he wasn't a U.S. citizen and he wasn't a green card holder. He had no status in the United States. Snap. So yeah, scared to death. And he had gone through a bunch of people that said, I don't know what to do. We can try and appeal the passport. We can try because it looks like you've got a passport here from New York. Nobody understood it. Um, so I got a little background on him and found out that he came over as a child of a diplomat, even though he didn't come over here. He was born here. His, his father came over as a diplomat from Iraq. Okay, so dad's here dad, from Iraq. Dad had come as a diplomat, diplomat and had, had in done New York. Some, yeah, it was working in the United Nations. And um, son was born here. Actually, there was a couple siblings born here. But come to find out, and actually this is something that I discovered as I took on his case, was that when you're a child of a, a diplomat, you're not born to the jurisdiction of the United States. So you don't have any of the benefits of That's being a U.S. citizen. All diplomats out there, keep this in mind. All diplomats. This is going to be this is gonna be something that I probably won't ever see again right. in my career. Um, but it was cool. So, so he, he walked in, told me the story. I was going, that can't be right. You're born here in the United States. I didn't know what he was talking about. But I said, hey, give me, give me five days and let me see what I can find. And, and through some study and research, we found some really, really nuanced old law that basically gave him a pathway to renounce his diplomatic status retroactively um, and then give I went back 30 path, years. Boom. Yeah, a path to a green card first. And then we were able to convince the officer even better that his green card needed to be issued 
from birth not from the time that he got it right now as a 30 year old because there's citizenship is yep. you have to wait five years right after that's huge card. so yeah huge thing and so we were able to convince them that so they retroactively did that and then so we able to we were able to apply for citizenship right after that which was a mess because the officers first of all the green card application officers had no idea what this was hmm. like i knew going into it that i was going to have a fight on my hand because not because they didn't want to give him the benefit because I knew nobody was going to, I knew myself that immigration officers were not going to know this law. Right. Because I had, I lucked into finding it a little bit, or maybe I'll give my pat on the back that I studied to find it. But yeah, we went in, he had no idea. I had to pull in a supervisor and say, I need you to look at the statute and I need you to come back and tell me that it doesn't fit. And they did. They came back about an hour later. We were there like two hours, came back an hour later and said, yeah, I think this works. And then they're like, yeah, you need a medical. And I'm like, nope, go back again. You don't need a medical. This doesn't require physical. And, and Anyway, and then it went, the citizenship, same thing. I knew they were going to look at it and go, he's only had a green card for two months. And I said, no, go back, look at where you're at. It so goes anyway, all the way back. It was a cool story. The kid, the kid's super excited. What and, I like about this story, okay, so professional to professional, I like the dig. I like the gear. I like the hustle. It's like, oh, wow, this is something different, which we encounter Every day in your yeah, and I think the important part is being honest about that. Like I didn't try and BS him and say, right. "Hey, give me five days." I don't know what I, you're you're lost. Everybody else just told him they're lost. Um, yeah. I don't. I didn't know. tell him pay me. I just right. said give me five days. I think that there's got to be a solution because it didn't make sense to me. And that dude now is a citizen for the first time in thirty years. After, <laughs> even though he thought he was even a citizen though he's for a twenty citizen, right? His yeah. whole entire life, yeah. and and now you just cleaned that up. And there's, there's just nobody that has that gear. I love that. I love that grind. I love that grit. That was, that was a fun one. That was one of the ones that I'll always remember just because, like I said, I don't think of all my attorney friends or immigration attorney friends, I don't think anybody's going to encounter this. Situation. Obviously, they did because this kid went into several right. of these. But um, I don't know if I'll ever encounter it again. And, and that's not the first one. I found some real weird things that we've been able to, to accomplish. Oh, we're going to talk stories. We're going we're gonna to start talking some more stories. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.